He was the wizard of a thousand kings And I chanced to meet him one night wandering He told me tales And he drank my wine Me and my magic man kind of feeling fine fire and when he spoke I felt this deep desire to free the world from its fear and pain and help the people to feel free again why don't we listen to the voices in our heart Cause then I know we'll find we're not that far apart Everybody's got to be happy Everyone should sing Cause we know the joy of life the peace that love can bring There spoke the wizard in his mountain home The vision of his wisdom means he'll never be alone And I will dream of my man stars that guide me with their light. Hi, and welcome to the David Alexander Infinite Energy Series. My name is Bjarne Trofton and uh, I'm here with my good friend David Alexander. You are watching video 17 which is the seventh video in our new format and uh, David what are we going to talk about today? Today we are continuing our series introducing what I call hard, the hardware of infinite energy or, or free energy. Uh, which is devices or systems that have a measured energy input and give a measured energy output which is larger than the measured energy input which often referred to as over unity and we explained that in one of our most recent videos so and we are doing this because that is generally in established science not accepted but you have seen numbers of examples of right and, and we have several more uh, a number of more videos following this one but today we're featuring uh, what could be called an electrical transient event now we had uh, two uh, number 15 video 15 we had um, ro rotation involved in that one and our last video, number 16, we had mechanical transient events, and this will be an electrical transient event. So for that, I understand that uh, you will tell us about the work of two university researchers, Dr. Peter Grinnell and his son, Dr. Neil Grinnell. Yes. That what they, uh, we're going to look at their experiment where they discharged high voltage electricity out of a capacitor into pure water. So we know what capacitors are and that they are everywhere in electrical, electronic equipment. Um, but what about capacitors is it that you want to emphasize that was important in the work of the doctors Grenell? 
I think what was really important in their work and showing what a capacitor can do, once you have it charged up, and if you provide a, a conducting path, um, in this case, at the high voltage they were working at, even water as a conductor, then the energy in a capacitor can come out really fast. Uh, so in fact, okay, we're, and you have something we're going to give uh, a little here? demo of that with a, a much lower voltage capacitor than they used. So we're, we're working at 90 volts and we're going to charge this, this capacitor is rated at 400. We're going to charge it up. And I will see if I can get our viewers a even better view. So we have a, a negative terminal marked and hook the negative lead there. And then the positive lead to the positive. And if our wires are good, we just found a bad wire, so sometimes they're not good, but we will, uh, I think that's long enough, I would say. Now, we don't really recommend that this is the best way to do it, but a screwdriver blade represents a, a nice conducting path. And I will take these leads off and um, short it out with a screwdriver blade. So do that, and then... It always makes me jump. I'm sorry, but it does. I know it's coming, but this is really fast. Because it's shocking. It's, yes, it is. <laughs> so we, uh, we're going to talk about that. that so th this is this was uh, quite the spark, but that's only 90 volts. That's only 90 volts. Now, the Grenos did their research. That well, they used a, a number of voltages, but they went up to 12,000 volts. 12,000 volts. 12,000 volts. You get 120 out of the and, wall. And we're 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 making now a very strong disclaimer that don't even think about trying something in those kind of ranges unless you had um, a master electrician or somebody that really understands what high voltage circuits can do. At that voltage, it could be an inch or so away, and, and depending on conditions, and, and, and the high voltage can jump into your body. And, and it won't be shocking, it'll be more like lethal. So We don't want that. We don't want that. Don't want that. So, okay. I mean, it, it come, does come out really fast. It you know, almost sounds like an explosion. Um, and, and you said that the Grenos discharged this 12,000 volt capacitor into distilled water? That's what they said. But distilled water is not a conductor, it's an insulator. Not at 12,000 volts. Not at 12,000 <laughs> volts, okay. So, so you get 12,000 volts into this water and what happens? It starts boiling and creating a lot of steam or...? Well, that's what you would expect. Yeah. But that's not what happened. Okay. It, you get a different kind of result, as they described in their article, and we have that reference below, that what they got from the, the water, the water turned into cold fog. There was no heat. The effect of the electricity was to break the water up into uh, the microscopic droplets that uh, when you see steam coming out of a steam kettle or whatever, you, that's a fog. So they got a, and, and it was not hot. So they got cold fog. Okay, so from this 12,000 volt capacitor discharged into water, they get a cold fog traveling at the speed of sound. That's and then what? What? That's what they said in their article. They had. Uh, several types of uh, very high frame rate cameras. Uh, I think they were video, I'm not sure, but, but they measured the velocity of that cold fog to be the speed of sound. Came out at Mach 1, sonic, sonic velocity. And then how did they work the results of their experiment? Well, as they published in their article, they um, there's a simple equation that lets you calculate the energy stored in a, a given value capacitor at a given voltage. They, they knew the mass of water 
that shot out of the top of their app apparatus and they knew how fast it was going that gives you a, a uh, what you need to do a calculation of the kinetic energy of the water and then uh, in their circuit they had losses in the conductors and they had a fairly big loss where they had a mechanical switch to uh, release the capacitor so we have an input energy known measured and we have a sum of output energies, which was the kinetic energy of the cold fog and the losses that they measured in their circuit. And so guess where this is going? And you're going to say they had <laughs> over, over unity. unity. And, and they did. did. And they, um, they, 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 they gave the numbers that, that showed that the over unity was 152% or 1.52 that's the output divided by the input and and they published <laughs> this oh ah, they did how how did they get it published if they could state and demonstrate over unity which we have seen is forbidden forbidden so what they did the way they uh, got around that they said that they that the electrical discharge released a previously unknown binding energy in liquid water when it's converted into fog water that's that's what they put in their article now of course they might be right that's what they published in my opinion what what happened was that the electrical transient event released another kind of energy and that's what they measured as, as the excess. And, and further down in this, further along in this series, I'll, I'll be explaining where I think the energy actually comes from. That will come later. And, and, and that will be interesting. Um, but so even with this over unity, you said that in their article, they state that they were staying within the bounds of the law of conservation of energy. That's what they say, both in the abstract to their article and then a couple places in the article. And the, they realize that they're finding more energy out than in. And they're making that point that they're, they've drawn a boundary around what they're doing and, and they're staying within the so-called law of conservation of energy, which I, I say in these videos is really an assumption. Right, and with that assumption, they are limiting themselves. Absolutely. If you draw a boundary around what you're doing and, and stating that something is impossible, you really aren't going to find it. And that's the result. And so that's what we are pointing out with these videos. And I think with a growing body of videos uh, published now, we are laying groundwork for showing that there have in fact been a number of these examples, different technologies, inventors, experiments done where what came out was more than what they put in. Provided certain parameters are present. Certain parameters. And, and we're right. stating what they are, uh, rotation, mechanical transient event, and this video, electrical transient event. Okay, and then... And, and there will be other parameters in, in succeeding videos. Like what? what what's next? Um, well, next, the plan is that I will be uh, presenting some information about the research of an inventor, of a researcher I met 40 years ago. And we hope that the, his particular experiment we look at will not make you dizzy. 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 Okay, today was shocking. Next time you might get dizzy. Um, in the meantime, uh, we would really appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up, a comment, suggestion, or even if you subscribe. And um, until then, we can only say, see, see you, you next video. video.